only by three minutes. All right. So before we begin this episode of the Nerdcast, I would like to encourage everyone out there that if you enjoy this episode, to share it with your friends on social media. This way, we are able to help grow the community here in Edmonton and help keep everybody up to date in the latest and greatest news and information regarding the geeky, nerdy people, groups, and events that happen in and around the city of Edmonton. Also, if you or someone you know would like to be featured on our show, please contact us over at northernnerdnetwork.com. Now, on with the show. All right, so welcome back to another edition of the Nerdcast. My name is Dan Shessel. And today we have none other than the greatest (laughs) co-host, Chelsea Thompson. (laughs) Thank you, Dan. I feel like you oversell me all the time. I'm like, whoa, the greatest. The greatest. That's a lot to live up to. You know what? I don't know how I feel about all those expectations. Who's going to argue with me right now? (laughs) I mean, really? I can tell you right now that this is the number one podcast in the entire galaxy. (laughs) It's the truth. It's the number one. I mean, you're not going to argue. No no one's going to argue here. No, I'm not. (laughs) It is the greatest. So welcome, everyone, to the greatest (laughs) podcast in all the galaxy that's very focused on Edmonton of, of all time ever. of all time of all time yeah, that's even including the future of yeah. podcasting yeah. uh that is right now here we are we are in the time of the greatest universal podcast ever that's, uh, that's focused on Edmonton mm-hmm. the Edmonton nerdy and geeky people groups and events that <laughs> happen around here all right oh <laughs> <laughs> All right, with all that out of the way, uh, Chelsea, welcome, welcome to um, just well, you're not at my home, but you're you're here. here. Um, yeah. Welcome. Thanks. Uh, so, I'm gonna ask you uh, because we don't have a- any kind of special guest today. Um, I would say our special guest for today is Canada. That is true. Because yes. Canada is our special guest. Uh, yes. uh, but but we'll get to Canada later. I want to know. What Chelsea Thompson was has been up to? Um, this week. This week was busy. It was the last week of school in the Vancouver School District. So I worked all week. Um, but it was kind of a funny week because it's the last week of school. Um, report cards are in. And I mean, I'm sure any of our watchers and listeners who are teachers and or parents can probably relate and understand to this for the last week of school usually before any kind of break, whether it's Christmas break or spring break or the end of school. It's kind of like this weird like limbo week where everything you need to get done is already done, but the kids still need to be in school <laughs> before the break happens. Um, so it's a lot of like filling time and like wrangling children and like keeping them entertained and amused with like semi-educational activities but if you try and push too much education on them in the last week they rebel like horribly and violently i don't know if you've seen the class of like yeah. six-year-olds rebel against their teacher but it's like it's a sight to be cold it's it um, can be nasty. i i can only imagine what that would look like and on in honesty i mean really what what, what you've already done all the work is done well, and like that's that's the thing, right? Like the work is done, the report cards are in and written, right? Like, yeah, it's, it's like, already a done deal. Like you could literally miss that entire week and not be faulted for it. Yeah. So but I mean, don't that, tell that, him. That, no, that happens. I mean, a lot of families leave on their summer vacation early and pull their kids early. But I mean, lucky for us, and this I think is the best compromise because, um, you know, outside and fresh air and sunshine. What's the, what are those things? 
that are happen to be good for small bodies that are growing. Um, so that's sort of the happy medium. Luckily, it's been really sunny. So basically, my whole last week was spent like outside on the playground in the field and playing like soccer baseball and tag and like the entire floor of the playground is lava. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, all the good and, stuff. And you still play that. That's yeah. that's awesome. Absolutely. Yeah. So I was totally doing supervision on the playground. I was helping out in a grade one class, one of the days I was at school. And I was on supervision, so I'm supposed to be watching the kids and making sure that, like, they don't hurt each other, nobody dies. Um, you know, the huge. <laughs> and uh, so I was sort of mediating a disagreement happening between two of the kids when a third kid in the class from, like, already perched up on some of the equipment yells, Hey, Miss Chelsea, the floor is lava. And of course, it's like the unspoken like social contract of the playground. It doesn't matter what you're doing. When someone tells you the floor is lava, you have to get off the floor. Yep. So like me and the two children that I'm mediating this argument with all like beeline it for the like closest thing we can find to jump on. And then once we're up and situated, not on the lava burning to death. Then we go back to like solving our problems together. I mean, really, I safety first. Yeah. When, I, I mean, you you have to you have to think about the children and their well being, and mm -hmm. if they're standing in lava, that that's takes not, priority. That's that. Yeah, you can't you can't do that. that yeah. That's. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, it was overall it was a fun week. We got to do we got to play outside a lot and um, let the kids enjoy fresh air and sunshine and be away from sitting stagnant at desks and glued to screens and, and whatnot, which I think is a great way to end the year. Yeah. Yeah. Last, the last day of school was on Thursday. So I slept in on Friday. It was a beautiful thing. And then mm -hmm. yesterday we cooked a, a crap ton of food and had a barbecue at our place. Just super mellow. I saw the pictures on Facebook. <laughs> I wasn't lying when I said we had all the food. You okay? So I was looking at the pictures, and it looked very adult. Um, and I, I, I say that because I know what adulting looks like, because it's, it's something we don't get to do here at our house. <laughs> there may or uh, may not have been charcuterie esque things. Yeah, there, there was a baked brie and roasted garlic, so it was it was pretty adult. Again, adulting. Uh, <laughs> things I'm like, oh. I remember that at one point. <laughs> we, did, we did have small people present. So good friends of ours came and oh. they brought their daughter and she's four. And other good friends of ours just had a baby. He's he's a brand new person. He's only a month old. Brand spanking new. Ooh. And he still has that new baby smell. And his toes are still soft and delicious. Um, <laughs> so yeah, there were small people present. But uh, yeah, all the food for everybody. Um, mostly the baked brie was because I felt like baked brie. I was like, give me, <laughs> give me melty cold. And, and I mean, really, <laughs> you can never say no to baked brie. <laughs> I mean, I like. I mean, yeah. If you're gonna do it, you go. You go all out. I mean, you're, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. And if then, you have a charcuterie board, why, why go halfway and just have the meat and cheese? Go, get the baked brie on there too. I mean. <laughs> And sausage and pickles and other kinds of cheese and tortilla I, chips and all the dip and baguette for the baked brie and fruit and veggies and salad and corn and steak and delicious mixed skewers of all kinds of stuff, shrimps and chicken and beef. And, Man, and then I'm uh, hungry again. Strawberry, blueberry, rhubarb crumble and uh, not pudding pudding. For dessert. Ooh. And then things for making late night s'mores around the fire pit. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, we had uh, a little bit of a storm scare uh, for Canada Day because it was just like, well, is it gonna is it gonna rain? Is it or isn't it? Those yeah. like huge, it's a day where those huge like thunderclouds just kind of get blown around and like skirt the city along the ring road kind of day. Yep. yep. Yeah. Uh, so we're we're like. We're we're hoping that it, it like it pulls off, and we get a nice little evening uh, to at least go and see, enjoy the fireworks. I didn't really care too much about the day. I just really, well, I know there's lots of 
activities going on in and around the city. I mean, it was insane. Uh, some of the stuff that was going on. Uh, but I was just, I was so excited uh, that it did. It, it pushed off just long enough. Uh, I did manage to go to my, my mother-in-law's house for, for Canada Day celebrations. Uh, we had a barbecue. We had the whole, like the, there was a bunch of family that came out. Uh, we had our annual water balloon fight. Cause nice. I mean, what is Canada day without a, a water balloon fight and a proper water balloon fight where it, it's like everybody on one team and I'm stuck on the one other side by myself with no help. <laughs> Even my own son abandoned me. He's like, no, I'm, I'm going with Auntie Brenda. All right. That's fine. And then everybody else went on that side. Cuts you so deep when they turn I, against you so young. I, well, and here's the thing. Uh, so I said, do you not see how it was unfair? He's like, yeah, it was unfair. I'm like, Doesn't do you matter. want to, does it, do you want to be on my team next year? He's like, no. I don't want to. <laughs> Well, I know I'm on anti It's team. unfair. It doesn't matter to me. <laughs> no. Uh, so yeah, uh, they all ganged up on me. Uh, he was mad at me because I stole his water gun. <laughs> <laughs> See, so mm, maybe not unwarranted retribution for thievery. Mm. Yeah. I feel like I can get behind that. <laughs> uh, he was already turned well before then. Uh, yeah. So. I had to steal it just so I had something to defend myself. Defend yourself with. <laughs> it was terrible. Uh, so yeah, I got soaked uh, pretty badly. However, I was able to hold my own uh, on my side of the my side of the fence there. Were there any fireworks in your day yesterday? Uh yes, I did. Uh, so Spruce Grove uh, has had uh, their uh, celebration out here, uh, and we did ma manage to make it down. Uh, we have two insanely grumpy kids today. Uh, because they're so tired. Oh, yeah. They're, they're exhausted. They are not used to staying up that late. Uh, so, yeah. We uh, we did manage to catch the, 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 the fireworks. Uh, we did have, at one point, and I don't know why anyone thinks that this would be a good idea, uh, but someone flew their drone right into the center of where the fireworks were being lit off. Mm, that's not cool. And I'm like, I'm almost hoping that the fireworks would hit it. <laughs> and explode it. And knock it out of the sky for being so stupid. <laughs> if you're going to spend like a thousand some odd dollars on a drone and then fly it into a center of the fireworks, you deserve to be shot out of the sky. <laughs> uh, so yeah, and aside from that, I'm like, what are you seeing? Like, when you're that close, like when you're when you're <laughs> when you got the camera that that close to the fireworks, you're only seeing a couple little sparks here and there. Like, you're not getting the full effect of the the fireworks. So I don't know. That was kind of dumb. Uh, but yeah, I I we did enjoy it. I mean, fireworks. They they spent a lot of money on these fireworks this <laughs> year. Uh, and so, yeah, they were quite impressive. I think there were like 20 minutes worth of fireworks. Wow. Also. That is a, that's a really long fireworks show. Yeah. And it wasn't cheap either. Like it was like the good stuff. Uh, so yeah, they were, oh, the man, I love fireworks. I mean, who, who out there doesn't like fireworks can probably just stop listening to the show right now. <laughs> just go home. Well, no, you'll no, have, no, we love you all. You'll you have can, to. <laughs> I'll I'll check. I'll double check the dates. I'm never sure when it happens, but um, there's a festival that happens in Vancouver in the summertime called the Festival of Light, where it happens over the course of a, a week or a couple of weeks, and there's three or four different nights where I think it's four different nights. So there's three nights. It's three different countries each prepare a fireworks show, and then the fourth night is a finale where they all put something together together wow. um so yeah if you like fireworks you and the fam should come on out here when the festival of light is happening and we can see all the fireworks and i, I we are trying to uh plan a no, time you're thinking to come down. Of coming, yeah. yeah so i'll i'll check and see when the dates are 
we are at in the at currently you're thinking to, August. Yeah, we're we're currently trying to figure out what's happening with work before we mm. we make, make any kind of yeah, make any kind of plans. But yes, we we would we do want to come down at some point. Mm -hmm. So so we'll see how that all plays out. Uh, aside from that, we did I did have some people come over on Friday night to play some board games. We played Tiny Epic Galaxies. Uh, Ooh, you got to play it. How was it? Uh, I really like it. Uh, it is it is a, it's such a little tiny game, um, but it doesn't take a lot to kind of explain the the, the basic rules of the game. Uh, and it is it is quite um, quite fun. I, I I really do enjoy it. It's a, it is very much a like uh, a strategy kind of game where you you really want to do the right kind of moves at the right time and and it's it's really neat. It, it still has a a bunch of dice that you got to roll, so it kind of uh, has that random element to it. But mm -hmm. I really do. Uh, there is some some moments in there where it's like, oh, this is this is fun. I, I really do enjoy it. So I did like that one. Uh, we haven't played Five Tribes yet. Uh, we did buy that recently, and I still haven't got that one to the table. And I, well, I've played it before, but yeah, we have we haven't had a chance to play that one yet. Mm. So uh, we have uh, we as as many of the people who uh, watch and listen to the show, we do have a, a new place that we we've, we've been living in for the last little while, and. We've we've kind of noticed over the last little while that our light in our bedroom would randomly come on at weird times. Uh, so it would either speed up at, at weird times uh, or come to, like the light would turn on. All sorts of weird things would happen with our with our light. Is it accidentally wired to a switch someplace else? No. So I will tell you. I'll tell you kind of the story. <laughs> so we would sit in bed. And like two o'clock in the morning, the light would would turn on, right? And we're like, "Why on earth is the, is our what light? Is, what is happening? What is happening?" Um, and it's oh, and we have a little remote that goes with this light, right? Well, our our house and because we're in a uh, a, a duplex. Oh, you're right? in a row house. We're Somebody in a duplex. Else's so, remote. Yeah, so the the duplex right next to us is identical, just flipped, right? Yes. So they have the exact same fan in their in her room. Uh, so she works nights, and because of that, when she comes home at two o'clock in the morning, she'll flip her light on with her remote, or turn it off, whatever. <laughs> And turn yours on with And her. turn mine on with hers. So, uh, and we've been going back and forth for like a week on this. Like, I, we couldn't figure out what was going on. And yeah, so I, I, I finally had enough chance of, uh, to go up there and change the RFI switch on the, on the fan. So you're on and different then, frequencies now? Yeah, so we're, we're on a different frequency now. But yeah, that one was a, that was a fun one. Why? What is going on with this? You buy a brand new house, brand new build, only to find out that it's haunted. Somebody died yeah. on the job site. He's lurking around. That was my first initial <laughs> uh, thought. <laughs> but there, there, nothing came up in the the police database. So <laughs> <laughs> I made him check it twice. <laughs> uh so that's it. Uh, like we said earlier, it was Canada's birthday not too long ago. So we did kind of... Yesterday. Yeah, it was yesterday. Uh, which, uh, uh, by the time this kind of rolls around, this will be a Tuesday when we release this episode. Uh, yeah, a few days ago by the time... So it'll be a, a few days. But we, I did want to like say uh, some, some things that maybe uh, are interesting about Canada. Well, and specifically with like a nerdy bent to them. I would say so. Yeah, let's try yeah. that. Uh, I I could I don't know anything like nerdy. <laughs> I mean, really, Canada's. I'm just gonna well, say some some facts about Canada. Right. Some really cool facts about Canada. So, 
Let's say uh, Canada's national parks, did you know this, are bigger than most countries? Yes, I did know that. So uh, there is uh, Wood Buffalo National Park that's in Alberta, and it rolls right into the Northwest Territories, uh, is even bigger, it is bigger than uh, 44,000 eight hundred and seven square kilometers uh which makes it bigger than denmark and switzerland combined i don't know if they're combined maybe it's combined anyways that's a big space yeah well, switzerland's pretty big isn't it no no switzerland is small denmark yeah, is Den large-ish yeah so it's probably in terms of like more. european countries yeah so i mean like just i mean that's just our national parks. Like we have some of the, the most amazing national parks. That's just one of them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and we have so many more. Uh, we have another, uh, 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 what's it called? National park, uh, Nahani national park reserve in the Northwest territories, which mm -hmm. is 30,000 square feet or square Plumbers. kilometers. Yeah. For that yeah. square feet. <laughs> so tiny. Yeah, that's that's awesome, right? Uh, here's one that I I find uh, is our our nerdy bent. All right, uh, we have the first ever UFO landing pad, uh, which was built in Saint Paul, Alberta. Uh, <laughs> the Minister of National Defense, uh, Paul Hallier, was there for the grand opening way back in 1967. So even in 1967. We were welcoming people we from were, everywhere. That's right. We not only are uh, a melting pot. No, we are a cultural mosaic. The States is a melting pot. That's we right. I keep, I, keep, I keep getting that mixed up. You're right. Thank you. Uh, we are a cultural mosaic. Uh, and even so, we are welcoming people from other planets. Just saying. Uh, we do have uh, some overpasses that are made entirely just for wildlife. Yep, we sure do. A lot of them are in our national parks. That I was speaking just of. Jasper and Banff have animal overpasses so yep. that wildlife doesn't get struck crossing the highway. Mm -hmm. uh, and they're actually really beautiful. They're like they're grass tree covered land bridges, basically. And large, like they're they're quite wide. Yeah. Like they're they just kind of look like they're part of the. It's just well, like just, a, it feels like you're going through a little tunnel. Yep. Yeah. yeah. So that's pretty awesome. Uh, we also have the the birthplace of Wolverine. Which is, yes. Which is here. I mean, I mean, we're going for our nerdy side here. I mean, really, we what is. Uh. I don't know. I can't. What's more nerdy than having a, a comic book character and one of the greatest comic book characters of all time, uh, Wolverine? Uh, well, and I mean, not just Wolverine. I and mean, he represents Canada fairly well. True. But I mean, we've got other amazing nerdy Canadian comic book characters. I mean, if you want Captain to talk Canuck. about Captain Canuck, the leader <laughs> of the North Guard. Right, and we, which is basically the Canadian Avengers, and we can talk about other awesome characters on that team, like Puck. Um, mm -hmm. I'm sure you know. I don't know if you've ever actually met him, but I'm sure you've heard me speak of him. My very good friend Joel. Um, Joel has gone as Puck for Halloween, and it's a spectacular <laughs> sight to behold because he's like the perfect bill to get to go as Puck. Um, so yeah, that's awesome. And then real life Canadian nerds who are nerdy and awesome and amazing, like astronaut Chris Hatfield. Mm -hmm. um, we just has... announced our two newest Canadians uh, astronauts uh, during the 150 celebration. Mm -hmm. uh, well, you can continue on with the Hatfield thing. Uh, and I'll just pull this up because I totally forgot to pull it up. Well, before. just that he's so awesome, and he's kind of like this amazing nerdy renaissance man, you know? He's an astronaut and a scientist, but he's 
musically inclined and writes songs in space and you know he uh speaks and writes books and he's just a super cool human being yeah uh, it's so, kind of exciting to call him a you know a fellow countryman so we we even have a a book uh, a chris hadfield he he wrote a children's book mm -hmm. uh, and it is pretty awesome uh, i think it's called the darkest dark if i'm not mistaken it's in our uh, our library there uh but jennifer sydney and josh kutrick Kutur? i know i butchered that please uh correct me if i'm wrong uh i i have the spelling here but i can't i can't say his name uh yeah are revealed to be the, the two newest canadian uh, astronauts which is pretty awesome so we're getting more more people from Canada up into space. So that's pretty awesome. Uh did you did you manage to check out uh the, the big speech from our wonderful Prime Minister? Uh the one he recorded earlier or the one that he did live? The one he did live. I haven't seen his live speech, but I saw his recorded speech. A friend of mine posted it to Facebook earlier. A lot of I know a lot of Albertans are uh, pretty mad at him at the moment <laughs> uh, because he he was naming off every province and every territory, uh, but he forgot one in particular. Uh, he missed he missed Alberta. He missed Alberta. <laughs> uh, I'm sure people will not fail to let him live that down. Oh. He already uh, he had to apologize uh, during the during the festivals uh, yesterday, uh, but yeah, uh, I I can see how it it happens. I mean, I don't I don't necessarily blame him too much for it. However, it's kind of that's kind of a big one to 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 miss. Uh, what else? Yeah. What other cool things about Canada do you uh, do you find awesome? Um, well, I want to take a second and talk about Peter Mansbridge for a little bit because he's going to be retiring from the National. Um, again, a staple of of Canadian news for decades now um, and also a very cool human being. Um, you know, again, not afraid to branch out and try new things. And um, he was Peter Moosebridge, the voice of Peter Moosebridge, the Canadian news anchor in Zootopia, um, and proudly representing our country in the form of an animated moose avatar. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yes. Uh, I mean, we've we've been watching him for years on TV. Uh, it's. Yeah, it'll be sad to, and that's the thing. Like, we have a lot of people, uh, like a lot of Canadian staples that we've had for uh, many years that have are now retiring. Uh, yeah. You know, and then I mean, there are the staples of amazing Canadians that we celebrate all the time. You know, Rick Hansen, Terry Fox, Michael J. Fox, who was just awarded with the Canadian uh, the Canadian Governor General's Performing Arts. Excellence in performing arts awards, um, you know. And I mean, if we want to talk about nerdy Canadian groups, I feel like it doesn't get nerdier than um, the original Captain Kirk, Mister William Shatner. <laughs> well, I, if you go back into that whole series, there was a lot of Canadians uh, involved that in the were, production that yeah. were involved in that production of of Star Trek in the the original one, at least, uh, and even going in further. Uh, a lot of Canadians were involved in those. Uh, what else? I I feel like I'm. I I had some other stuff here that I just totally must have clicked away from. <laughs> I mean, then there is like the homage to Toronto. That is, you know. Um, <sighs> There's the center of the universe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the center of the universe. But I'm thinking, 
what am I thinking of? Oh, it's know. gone. I had something, but it's gone. It'll come back to me. Yeah. Uh, so essentially, what what this whole the whole thing is is Canada is awesome. I I cannot. I cannot find or or know of a better place to live or or work or be than here in Canada. Uh, just the the culture here, the I don't know. Like to to me, I love I love our healthcare. <laughs> you know, there's so many amazing uh, qualities about Canada that. It's just why why would you want to live anywhere else? Mm -hmm. Yes. Aaron is watching. He says it's cold here. Uh but we also have snowboarding. You should go snowboarding, Aaron. <laughs> it's well, fun. I think the thing that makes me most proud working in schools and working with kids is we are a wonderful country with so much to offer, but there's always room for improvement. And are we jamming out? No, Music no. Music is on. Sorry. <laughs> dance break. No, yeah, it's dance break. Sorry. That wasn't <laughs> was supposed to be on. All right, anyways, continue. Um, you know, things in our past worth acknowledging and trying to do better. And working with kids, particularly in Vancouver, it makes me really happy to see the younger generation so willing and open to learn about things that, you know, we haven't maybe done so well. Um, and all of their thoughts and goals and dreams to make things better in the future. You know, an example, one of my favorite things working in the Vancouver School Board, something that they've started now, as a lot of the schools do, have always done morning announcements. But so many of the schools now are starting with a little, you know, acknowledgement that this school is built on unseated Squamish First Nation land or you know, whichever First Nation territory the school happens to be built on. And that, you know, stuff like that being built into daily routines um, that the kids are being exposed to make me really proud. That's, that's awesome. Uh, so uh, we, we did have a, a, a quick comment uh, asking why does Chelsea sound like a Dalek? Um, <laughs> Yes. For some some reason, her her audio or her internet connection is so funny uh, that yeah, you need to say exterminate now. Uh, exterminate, exterminate, <laughs> exterminate. Yeah, that's right. Uh, Doctor Who love for all of you. I don't know. It, like I was, we were talking before the the episode started that she just needed to talk like a robot the entire time and just go with it. Yeah, I did not accept that challenge, but I could now. From here on out, I could just put on the nasally, broken robot voice, embrace the weirdness. Embrace, embrace. <laughs> Although, does that make it even weirder? If I'm when I speak regularly, if I sound like a robot, when I talk like a robot, what do I sound like? <laughs> I don't know. Even more robot? I don't know. Even more roboty? Aaron, help us out. When I talk <laughs> like a robot, do I sound even more roboty? <laughs> uh yeah. It's I don't I don't know what it is, but it sounds awesome, so we're just we just figured we'd just go with it. <laughs> uh yeah, so we're we're not really gonna have a a, a huge, uh, super long episode this week. Uh, so we will quickly move into our, our our events that are happening over the next little while that we kind of like to 
all the fun uh, things you can go and do. Yeah, which I believe uh, there's lots more coming up here in the next little while. I mean, it's summertime, right? Like, mm -hmm. it's 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 lots of fun. All right, so we got Toronto right that's happening on Sunday, July sixteenth. Uh, this will be uh, it's it's starting. I just I just put a, a random date in there because I mean there's uh, different camps throughout the throughout the season. So we got uh, from July nineteenth to twentieth. We got the the ages nine plus group, uh, and the the campers will be taking a step through the process of creating a comic as well as enjoying fun comic related activities. Uh, by the end of the camp, they will have created at least uh, a one page comic. So that's pretty cool. Uh, nice, and it'll be to be continued for the ages thirteen plus on July twenty sixth. To the 28th uh again campers will be taken through an advanced techniques techniques and graphic storytelling idea creation and development and learn more about the business side of comic book creation by the end of the camp they will have it each created a one-page comic which will be published in an, in a, uh, an anthology, anthology? Yep. sweet that's awesome why do you put an anthology together like <laughs> Uh, and then we, as you continue on, uh, you can go to the conclusion if you're 15 plus, uh, and this will be for July, uh, 22nd to 23rd, which is actually before the 26th. Uh, this is a two day camp. Uh, we'll focus on the fine details of creating a fully realized graphic story, learning on how to fine tune the story and art and learning the business and promotion will be the focus of the camp. Uh, participants should already have a specific story idea they'd like to develop before the camp starts. In this camp, drawn to writers will be given extra time to complete their comic to be published in an anthology. Oh. Yeah. So, and this will be happening at Happy Harbor Comics. Uh, I would go down there and check them out for more details. That's right. Uh, Start them young. Indoctrinate those young nerds, folks. Yeah. Get them to come up with the the next greatest uh, Canadian comic book hero. Comic book hero. Yeah. Uh, we also have uh, Dark Matters uh, coming up uh, on July twentieth. Uh, Dark Matters. Uh, this this round will be speed. Uh, All the nerdy physics. I can yeah. just tell. Yeah, it'll re it says redefine your idea of speed and push the limits, and not just speed limits. Yes. Yes. Uh, so again, there'll be DJ on site. There'll be uh, the bar, the whole nine. Uh, so yeah, go check that out. Adult beverages will be served. Mm -hmm. uh, then we, we're moving along uh, to the cl closer to the end of July. Uh, but I really want to uh, mention this one. Uh, this is pure spec. Uh, is back. Uh, last year they, I, I believe, they took the year off, uh, but they're back this year uh, for uh, starting on Friday, July twenty eighth, uh, and twenty ninth. I, th I'm not sure if it goes to the thirtieth. I'll have to double check that. Uh, let me see. As I check this pure spec, I feel like this is. Oh no, it's just July 28th and 29th. That's right. Okay. Uh so yeah. It is uh they've they've revamped a lot of what their their focus was gonna be. Uh because it was such a, a small uh like kind of like science pulp fiction kind of uh festival and they're really going uh, really into the the whole like authors and and writers and uh, there'll be other things going on. But I mean, go check out their website. They got a lot of uh, different blog posts up uh, about what's going to happen over the next little while. Uh, I believe we're 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 going to be there. I'd I'd like to say we are, uh, but I <laughs> I'm having a hard time trying to figure out what's happening with work. Uh, so. I am going to say that Northern Nerd will be there. I don't know if I will specifically be there, but... You can send uh, junior correspondent Nehemiah Chessel in your yeah. stand. 
uh, somebody from the Northern Nerd Network will be in attendance. Uh, either we, I think we may have a booth there. I'm not quite 100 percent sure. I don't. I will have to all work out the details. Uh, but we'll we'll be there. So uh, go and check that one out. That's Pure Spec having on July 28th and 29th. All right, moving along to Fragapalooza. Uh, this is happening in August. I want to make mention of this. Uh, this is a four day event. It's awesome. Go check them out. Uh, <laughs> it's all gaming. gaming, gaming, gaming. All the video games. All the video games. And uh, like we said last week, if you uh, missed, that, missed that episode, we did have uh, the uh, the director for Yes uh, come on and she talked about Yes Quest, uh, which is a 24 hour gaming marathon that's happening on August 19th. Uh, more gaming. I mean, it's gonna be awesome. We got. I. I've. I feel like and, there's and there's, and every different type of gaming under the sun. You want to come and play video games for 24 hours? Good on you. Come on down. You want to come and play board games for 24 hours? You betcha. You're invited too. You want to come down and play RPGs for 24 hours? Come join the party. All the gaming. Anything you could possibly want to play? Bring it on down. Have so, a grand old time. So get your get your groups together. Get uh get some some friends and family or whatever uh and get your game on uh because it's going to a good cause it's going to be a lot of fun so go check that out yes quest 24 hour gaming marathon happening on august 19th uh yeah that is pretty much about as far as i want to go into our our calendar like they said there's lots of uh, stuff happening on the next little while uh that's that's it that's all Sweet. yeah that i know I, I like i said it's, it's a shorter one this week uh but i really just I want mean, to when it's just you and me it usually is a shorter one so yeah uh but thank you chelsea uh you're awesome as always thank you dan you're awesome as always i know <laughs> <laughs> uh like i said this is the greatest podcast in the entire universe in the history of podcasts in the history of podcasting. Universe. That's right. Uh, so you're welcome, uh, universe, <laughs> uh, for this hot mess of a podcast. It makes me feel like today our outro song should be You're Welcome from Moana. Yeah. <laughs> I still have yet to see that show. Oh, my goodness. You need to watch it. It's so great. I keep hearing that. Yeah. Uh, so that's it. That's all. I want to thank everybody out there for watching and or listening to this edition. And I'll see you guys. On the next one. All right, we want to thank everyone who listens to the show and ask everyone to share this with your friends on social media if uh, if you can. Uh, the Northern Nerd Network, <laughs> Northern Nerdcast, is produced by myself along with Chelsea Thompson and Trina Schessel. And that's all the time we have. I want to thank everyone out there for listening to this edition of the Nerdcast. And I'll see you guys on the next one.